Okay, thank you for joining me uh, with this video. So before I get started, make yourself a nice cup of tea, coffee, relax, um, sit yourself down, stream this through the TV, whatever it may be, wherever you're watching this from, because um, it's going to be, uh, look, I estimate this talk may take somewhere up to anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. Um, so look, obviously what I want to highlight uh, is the impact of the, the rising interest rate. So the RBA's official cash rate announcement and what this what this means in uh, you know I guess plain English trying to break it down and simplify it as simple as possible because when you hear there's a rise in interest rates uh, you know then you start to hear the news saying property market's going to crash um, it all becomes panic stations and people you know I guess getting what what I want to do is help you understand the real meaning behind this and looking at historical factual trends and uh, you know how. I guess these statements have arisen, you know, what, what gives weight to, to suggesting that the property market's gonna crash. Um, so what I've done is I've put together and I'll, I'll do a share screen here with the Zoom. Um, I've put together, I've obviously pulled the, uh, the annual change in housing prices and cash rate index, the graph there from ANZ um, from their latest report. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I guess the first thing is understanding the historic trends of interest rates and how that's correlated with property prices. So just bear with me one second. I'm just gonna share that screen with you now. Um, okay, here we go. All right, so here we have the graph. Okay, so before I begin, let me just simply, um, I'll explain the graph to you and what it means just, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Um, obviously down here is, uh, where I'm hovering the cursor, it explains the year. Uh, over here to the right-hand side, okay, that's basically talking about the, you know, this is the official cash rate based on percentage point, point sorry, based on the percentage point change. Um, so it's not the actual uh, percentage, just to clarify that. Um, and that's highlighted there in the light blue. Then you've got the dark blue column, which, you know, that's, as you can see, that's talking about the highest price, sorry, the house price change in percentage terms. Um, so I guess the, the thing to remember here is when you're looking, uh, so from here upwards, suggest a decrease in interest rates. And when you're looking uh, anything below the zero point there is a rise in interest rates, okay? So just, um, I hope that makes sense and I hope I've explained it well pause the video and rewind if required. But um, so I guess what, I, what I'll do now is let's have a look at um, a couple of historical trends, shall we? So if we look at, uh, you know, the 94 to 96 period, 1994, 1996, just over here, you'll notice there was an extremely high cash rate, right? So there was obviously um, quite high interest rates as a result. And through that period, there was only a 4% um, decrease recorded in property values. So not, not, not bad considering the, the decline, uh, sorry, the increase in the interest rates there. Now, if we cast our eyes to the 98 period, right? So you'll notice that interest rates had steadily increased. Adversely, property values had increased. Okay, so they'd seen considerable growth despite the fact there was an increase in interest rates, which sort of uh, defies what we're hearing in the media at the moment. That, you know, if interest rates, if interest rates are low, um, property prices boom, if interest rates rise, property prices uh, decrease. So the notion is. So there's, there's uh, this period here as an example. Then the other one I want to cast your eyes upon is the 06 period, which uh, shows a similar trend where you'll notice that the interest rate, uh, the interest rate once again had risen. However, so had property values. So despite the fact there was an official uh, cash rate announcement and property values, um, sorry, interest rates had increased, sorry, property values had also done the same. And over here, as I'm sure you're all aware, this was a, the uh, global financial crisis. And even then, um, as you can see, high house prices across the board had, had dipped to around 8%, um, which in the grand scheme of things wasn't too bad. And I think as here in Australia, we had buffered, um, you know, we, we had got through that quite well. Now, what I want to do is um, 
let's cast our eyes. You'll notice this highlighted section here, which I want to illustrate. And the reason I've done this is I will also um, refer this back to the local suburb uh, where our office is lo located here in Cherrybrook. And what this will do um, is, is just, I've got the suburb data where you'll be able to see how this interest rate change actually looks in real terms as far as dollar value and that's concerned, right? So what you'll notice here is there was a drop in property values and this was towards the fourth quarter of 2015, first quarter of 2016. And what had happened there, and this, this was just a simple case of oversupply, no demand. Uh, let me rephrase, or not no demand, low demand, right? So there was a, a lot of people had got wind of the property boom here. Um, you know, interest rates were relatively low. And people thought, you know what, now's the time to cash out because we're getting good money here. Um, however, in doing so, that saturated the market and it hit a bit of a dampening cycle. So, you know, you can don't take my word for it. If you go back and look at the media reports back in this period, you'll see there were talks of the bubble had burst and um, all the negative media commentary had risen as, as a arisen as a result. Now, then it hits the second quarter of uh, the 2016 period, all up until 2017, and we were booming again. So there was no talk of that negative commentary. It was brushed to the side and uh, like it never happened. And here we, uh, we, we look at, so we resort to the, uh, the green section here. So if you recall back uh, to the May 2017 federal budget announcement, where um, obviously the policy was made there in relation to APRA's intervention um, to tighten lending restrictions. So what that had done as a result, despite the fact we had record low interest rates at that point in time, which was sitting at the, the RBA's official cash rate was sitting at 1.5%, um, we had seen close to an 8% drop in property values. Um, so then you sort of look at it and go, well, hold on, just because we had low interest rates, yet there was still a decline in property values. So uh, bottom line, um, when you look at this graph, do interest rates directly correlate with the change in property values? I wouldn't say it's the sole factor, and I should I don't for one second believe it's the you know the factor that should be reported on as a sole measure. As you can see, absolutely there are periods where you know there's been a rise in interest rate, property values have decreased, and and vice versa. Um, but also you know, what, what sort of contradicts is when you look at low interest rates, yet property values still decline. So yes, you can see some forms throughout the graph where there is a correlation, absolutely. But I think that the need to understand this from a more holistic approach. And, you know, when I say holistic approach, this all comes down to there's more to it than just that an interest rate change. And just before I go to my next slide, what I want to illustrate here as well is you could already see before there was the 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 increase of the interest rate announcement, you know, uh, you know, three months at least three months before that announcement, the property market was already in decline. So you know, was the interest rate responsible for the property market correction in this case? I don't believe so. No, the graph seems to suggest otherwise. Um, will the market further correct as a result of the interest rate uh, increase? Absolutely. Uh, but we've got to look at the other measures that have come into play. And, you know, the thing to remember here is this is all part of the macro macroeconomic policy. And with, for those of you that aren't aware, there's three forms of macroeconomic policy. So you've got fiscal policy, which is obviously, that's the only policy that a government can control uh, within their means. Then you've got monetary policy, which comes down to the Reserve Bank of Australia. And um, so the interest rate change would fall under a fiscal policy and the exchange rate policy being the other three policies we can manage from a macroeconomic standpoint here in Australia. So uh, I think what, I, what I'm sort of getting out of what I want to illustrate here is the market was cooling well before there was any interest rate announcement or, right? So, and then you hear comment on the other side saying, but you know, unemployment rate is at a record low sitting at 4%. That, that's true, but you know, I think what, on the flip side of that, there's pros and cons to everything, right? And what you need to understand is wages growth has not kept up with um, the, the pace of inflation, okay? So there's absolutely a degree of inflation here. 
Um, obviously, the, the banks are making it a lot harder to get finance, um, obviously, and that's all, um, you know, that, that's common sense. I mean, that's a very good thing to do. They build a buffer. When you're lending and borrowing or already, banks and lenders will build that buffer in to, to factor in any possible interest rate increases in the future. So, you know, I think what we need to understand here is the market, what's my personal view? I mean, look, I'm not a financial advisor or anything. I'm just looking at the facts. So, you know, please don't hold me to this. This is just an opinion. And, you know, hopefully this can share an open-ended discussion where we can bounce ideas. I'm not saying what I'm, not, what I'm saying. I'm not suggesting for one second I'm right. Um, but what I am saying is you've got to look at this more holistically. So if you're solely looking at interest rates as the, um, the catalyst and, you know, you, you think that, the decrease in interest rates is going to change and indicate that property prices will continue to fall as a result. Um, uh, you know, I think you'd be, well, after I've spoken now, I think you'll find that there's more to it than just the interest rates. Um, and so just make sure that I've sort of touched on everything I wanted to touch on there. Um, uh, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. So what I'll do is I'll I'll switch to my service area um, here in Cherrybrook, and I just want to raise your eyes on the 2018 or 2019 period to, to see how that sort of translates. And when you're looking at property values in the grand scheme of things, you know how detrimental is a property market correction or a crash, whatever you wish to call it. Um, but you know I think the, the thing to, to to bear in mind when uh, you know media outlets are talking about property market crash or correction that's open to interpretation and people's views from what I, um, you know, my personal belief. I mean, to sit there predicting that the property market's going to fall by, I've seen some accounts talk as high as 15% as a result of interest rate changes. Well, there's nothing in the history of data that we have available um, to suggest that anything of the sort will happen. Um, nothing's impossible. Could it happen? It, it could, you know, you, you can't rule it out, but you've got to look at the vast series of factors that come into play here. And, you know, we haven't even spoken about the, you know, the, the immigration that, um, you know, people immigrating and coming into Australia, uh, the shortage of housing stock that's here at the moment. Um, you know, so there's a lot of the, there's a big rental shortage, um, which is obviously going to put a massive, you know, I'd expect investors to slowly start and, and creep out as well when they start to sniff a few bargains. So there's there's so much more at play here than just interest rates that you really need to look at this on a, on a broad, broad uh, spectrum. So I hope that sort of makes sense and I've made myself clear with that point. Now, just to finish up, um, I'll use my suburb as an example here in Cherrybrook. So as you can see that, you know, negative... 8% uh, price loss uh, trans. So I'll just flick the screen. Here we go. So if you look at present, um, Cherry Brook's currently sitting at 31.2% growth. Okay. So if we go back to that period in which Apparent intervened and uh, the market really started to take off after 2019, um, mid, I think it was whenever the election took place in that mid, mid year at some point where I guess there was talks of where people were sort of in standstill and limbo as well was when the Labor government had announced that we're going to abolish negative gearing. So people were sort of at a standstill. And almost immediately after the, uh, the election, the, the market took off again. So you'll notice that even though we had record low interest rates at that point in time, sitting at 1.5%, um, you know, there was a 6.6 .6 correction over that, that sort of two year span. Um, and, you know, within a year that that correction was almost nullified. And then we saw throughout the COVID period here, um, you know, it, it grew at unprecedented levels, right? 34.2%. And what I'd also encourage you to cast your eyes upon is the fact that almost every economist was, you know, were tipping a global crash throughout the, uh, the COVID period. Yet, um, you know, as a result, the market was, was resilient and performing quite well. Um, so I'll just put this back to full screen again, but you get the picture. So when you're looking at the, uh, you know, the total value here and you look at the historical data, you know, Cherrybrook, for instance, is, uh, you know, 
excuse the pun, safest houses as, as far as a suburb to buy in is concerned. Um, according to historical data, I'm not going to make any predictions or speculation. I think it's very negligent of anyone to do so. It's it's like a crystal ball. Um, you know, if we could all speculate and guess what's what's around the corner, we'd all be rich. But just you know, all we can do is go off historical data trends. Uh, basic understanding of your macroeconomic policies and if you're not familiar with that i mean that that's again that's another video that i could spend hours explaining so i don't want to bore you with it the information's out there um but yeah so that's um i'll just i'll stop the screen share now so yeah that pretty much sums it up so i hope that gives a bit of overview and um, gives you a broader picture of there's a lot more to it than just um, interest rates you know, the property market was indeed correcting before the interest rate announcement. So, so to say the interest rates um, of, of what's caused the breaks and the, the standstill and the correction of the property market um, is simply not true. I mean, the, the data clearly shows that. Um, will talks of further interest rates, um, you know, have an impact on the property market? Well, that'll depend on the other macroeconomic policies that are put into play. Um, you know, I think if I am just, just my opinion and if I'm looking at things for what they are, you know, it's a correction we, we need to have, right? Because if you look at the, the inflation levels, our property values last I checked in March some point, you know, Sydney was rated the second most expensive city to live in, um, second to, I think we were Hong Kong. Um, so very well, inflation was, was out of control. But, you know, they'll hit a point where the market will correct. And at what point that is, I, I don't know. That's anyone's guess. That's, again, speculation um, where it'll pick up again. Now, how long that goes, how sharp the fall is, um, it, like I said, is anyone's guess. I mean, if it's a quick fall, it'll likely be a quick fall back up, uh, a quick rise back up. If it's a, a long stagnated sort of fall, which ends up being, you know, let's just say even 10% for argument's sake, right? I'll, let's just say it's a 10% correction over the course of a year, year and a half. Um, that 10%, looking at our suburb here in Cherrybrook, um, you're still going to be plus 24% in the total in the grand scheme of things over that, that three year period. So there's, there's so much more to look at that it's, you need to spend a lot of time and, uh, you know, really dabbling and understanding this than, than a simple, um, you know, media report you know and, and again make no mistake i'm not for one second suggesting the market's not going to correct my my personal opinion is it will it already has um i guess it's just a matter of you know how much will it correct by and for how long that's anyone's guess um and as i said before if anyone was able to predict exactly that you know, we, we'd all be uh, we'd all be millionaires so that sums up my talk. Uh, I hope that helps, gives a better understanding of interest rates, its impacts and why there's more to it. Um, it's not the interest rates um, that are solely responsible for the, it's just, you know, a small piece of the puzzle uh, for simple terms. But if you want to talk or discuss this further with me or have any questions, anything I haven't touched on, um, by all means, you can reach me. You know, I've got the contact details just up there. Um, email, give me a call. Happy to answer any questions if I missed anything. Um, and that's pretty much it for today's talk. So Angelo Lambropoulos, Director of Lambros Realty, thank you for tuning in and I hope I haven't put you to sleep. Okay, bye.